This is the official Star Wars Genesis video install guide. There is a text version on the website that I'll be referencing throughout this guide still, and of course you'll need to have that open as I guide you through it. I'm mainly making this because a lot of the other videos online are missing some uh, key steps and I have to deal with the aftermath of that in my Discord. So you know, might as well tackle the problem head on. So first things first, you want to make sure you're installing this on the Steam version of Starfield and that you own the paid uh, Shattered Space DLC. It will not work on Game Pass uh, Microsoft versions and it will not work if you don't have the Shattered Space DLC. And then of course you'll need a new save and unfortunately we only have uh, English support as of right now. If you set the game language to something else, then none of the converted voice lines or even the subtitles are going to work properly. It's just going to be a vanilla Starfield. In terms of requirements, uh, the most important thing is going to be having at least 10 gigabytes of VRAM on your GPU, but ideally you have a 16 plus. And then an SSD, of course. You will have stuttering issues out the ass if you try playing this on an HDD or an external SSD. You want to make sure it is an internal SSD. In terms of pre-install steps, you want to set your page file to 80 gigabytes, which I'll guide you through right now. Uh, just press the Windows uh, key plus R uh, on your keyboard and then type in uh, sysdm.cpl in the text box. Then just go to Advanced, uh, Settings under the Performance tab, then click Advanced again, and then click Change. Make sure you select your SSD and then you're going to change it from the default system manager size to custom size. Then type in 80,000 and confirm it. This isn't something unique to Genesis by the way, it's kind of like a but that's the modless staple at this point for a smooth experience. Skyrim modlists, uh, Fallout modlists all have to do the same thing. In terms of other games, you won't notice a negative impact to performance. In fact, this will actually improve performance for most demanding games. Next up is antivirus. If you have one, make fucking sure you disable or add proper exceptions to it, as you're going to have a really bad time if you don't. Also, make sure you check out the incompatible apps section of the website. This will be updated over time, so make sure you're not solely relying on this video. Just click the link on the website to see the most up-to-date list and guarantee you won't run into any issues later. It's mainly performance overlay softwares that seem to cause issues, outside of the antivirus stuff, of course. And then make sure you turn off any VPN you have enabled, as that will cause some download errors. And finally, you want to make sure you're turning off automatic updates for Starfield on Steam. Uh, just go to your Steam library and select this option. I know it doesn't make sense, but the way it works is that when you launch Genesis, it doesn't count as launching the game through Steam, so it never auto-updates. I know there's other ways out there to do this, but from my experience, people forget they did it that way, and then when Starfield does get an update, and then I update Genesis in response, they then show up in my help channel uh, showing me a Starfield out-of-date message. This is more than enough, so don't worry about that. Also, a good time to mention that if you've previously modded Starfield in the past, you're going to want to do a quick reinstall of it just to clean out any leftover mods. If you modded it with Vortex, make sure you also open Vortex and delete any mods in there. Alright, so now to the actual install stuff. If you've used Wabajack before, then you'll notice the process is a bit more streamlined. This is a very popular mod list, and the target audience is a bit broader than most Wabajack mod lists out there, so I had to simplify it as much as possible. If you don't know what Wabjack is, it's basically the go-to application for mod list installations. Millions of people use it and it's perfectly safe. The way it works is you log on and connect to Nexus mods through it and then it automatically installs and sets up all the necessary mods for you if you have premium. And if you don't have premium, it makes you click download on each mod, but the setup stuff is still handled uh, after automatically. Also, as of making this video, Nexus is offering a 3 day free trial for their premium membership, so I recommend just getting that and make sure you cancel it after Genesis is finished installing. Just wanted to mention all that before getting to the actual install part so you save some time. But yeah, let's get started. If you've never played Starfield ever on your PC, just go to Steam and launch it once, then just close out of it. Next up, let's download the Star Wars Genesis setup executable from here. Uh, when you click the link, it'll take you to this site. You want to make sure you right click and select uh, standard download. 
If your download is being blocked on your browser, there's usually a way to just download it anyway, but if you're having issues, just try a different browser. Now just double click the executable file you just downloaded and this window will open up. Keep everything default, just make sure the drive letter matches yours. Uh, this would be the same SSD that your Starfield game is installed on. Don't change the actual path over here. Don't put it in your Starfield folder or weird stuff like that. Just keep it default, trust me. Once that is done, uh, Wabajack will automatically open and you want to click the gear icon on the bottom left. Then log on to Nexus Mods here. If you're already logged in from another mod list, please just log out and log back in because high chance you've been automatically logged out a long time ago and you're going to get a bunch of errors when you try uh, installing Genesis. Once that is done, just click browse lists on the left side and then click install from disk up here. You want to navigate to the Star Wars Genesis compiler folder and then select the Star Wars Genesis Wabajack file. It's all already organized for you so you don't need to worry about uh, finding the file, it's going to be in the same exact path. Once you do that, the install window will open up and you want to make sure the install location is set to the Star Wars Genesis game folder. A lot of people skip this game part and then just put the Star Wars Genesis folder and fuck everything up. Please don't be that guy. Once you set that, the downloads folder will automatically fill itself out, and that's it. Click install and it'll begin. But we're not done. Please don't fucking click off. I will look at the analytics and rage at you guys if you do click off. I'll probably delete the video if there's a lot of you doing it. There are very important uh, post install steps that you must do after, but for now, just let it install and once it's done, tune back in. If you encounter any download errors, just click retry. Otherwise, there is a Wabajack issues section on the website with literally every possible issue and fix out there. I also gotta bring this up. If you're using a third party Wabajack install to do this, you're not being smart. It will get you errors and issues that nobody else gets. And when you come to my Discord showing that error, I won't be able to help you and I'll just tell you to go to Wabajack Discord. Also, just so you're aware, Wabjack is a smart installer. If you close it right now while it's going and then do the same steps as before, it will resume where it left off. You don't have to worry about any lost progress or anything like that. Same idea even if you're done with the install. If something isn't right, you notice, running it again essentially repairs it. There's never really a need to do a complete reinstall uh, using Wabjack, so don't waste your time. So once the install is finished, go to the Star Wars Genesis game folder and you'll see a bunch of files. You want to run the Genesis documents bat file here. And if you're missing these files, and that means the install had a slight hiccup, just go back and do the Wabjack portion again, where you set the paths and everything, and it will repair and install what's missing. When you run this bat file, you'll be asked a question about graphics, answer with whatever suits your needs, and then the bat will automatically uh, close. If it doesn't automatically close and you get an error, just uh, click the bat doesn't work button on the website and it'll give you instructions on what to do next. After that, launch the mod organizer executable here and you'll get a pop-up just like this. Click yes and you're ready to launch the game. Just go to the top right, select the SFSC option and run it. You'll see the Genesis title screen and everything. Just start a new game, select whatever loadout option you want, and then create a character. As soon as you load in, just quickly open a menu like your inventory and you'll get a pop-up like this, giving some context on what's happening and also telling you to save and restart. Just press escape, save, and then fully quit the game and start it up again. You would be loading instead of starting a new save now, and yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're playing on a controller or ultra wide, there are sections on the website with additional instructions. And if you want to install the HD overhaul, there's a section for that too. Also, depending on your answer when you ran the Genesis documents.bat file, your settings will automatically be configured. There's some stuff you should never turn on though, like VSync, dynamic resolution, and dialog camera. But then there's also uh, DLSS and frame gen that's off by default, mainly because I'm sick of people that have driver issues crashing when they turn it on and complaining about it. I suggest just playing without it for like two hours, then turn it on. That way, if you do start crashing, you know it's because of this and not something else. If you're having performance issues outside of that, make sure you check the performance page on the website. And also, I highly recommend reading the beginner tips as they change every time when Genesis is updated. 
One important thing to keep in mind is that if you want to play two separate characters, make sure you don't switch between them through the in-game method. For example, if I'm currently playing on Daniel, don't switch to Deity Benji like this. Instead, close your game, relaunch it, and then load into Deity Benji. Otherwise, you risk breaking a lot of modded uh, NPCs. If you only play on one character, this isn't really an issue that you have to worry about. But also keep in mind the difficulty settings here. Don't rely on the in-game ones as that fucks up a lot of stuff and causes bullet sponges. In terms of actual difficulty, Genesis is pretty hard for a lot of people in the beginning, but it's also very rewarding once you pull through and get proper armor and weapons. You really feel like you're just a regular guy in the Star Wars galaxy, especially when you start off, but that potential power fantasy also starts kicking in eventually, and it feels a lot better when you struggled in the beginning to reach that point. But yeah, this is the complete install guide. If you do run into other issues, make sure you check out the support section of the website. If you still can't fix whatever issue you're having, then you can always use the help channel in the Discord.